Hello, Michelle at Holisticism here, and I'm going to show you, walk you through, how to build a circular, intuitive, regenerative sales calendar for the year 2022. If you're an intuitive business owner, you're going to need this. And even if you're not an intuitive business owner, I think that thinking about your year in this regenerative way will be really useful for you. Uh, so I'm going to teach you this inside of Notion in just a second, but if you want even more and really the exact step-by-step -step on how to do this. I'm teaching a class called Quantum Leap 2022 Future Visioning and Building Your Circular Sales Calendar next week on Wednesday, December 29th. It's gonna be really fun. So I hope you can join me for that um, because I'm gonna give you this really baller notion doc that's even better than the one I'm gonna show you. And it's such a relief to have a sales calendar and know kind of what the sort of main beats of your year are going to look like inside of your business, where your money's coming from, uh, and all that good stuff. Because when you don't, when you sort of like fly by the seat of your pants in your intuitive business, and you're just putting up products and services and launching projects willy-nilly, it's exhausting. It'll burn you out really fast. The reason that we often do this is because we don't have a promotional calendar or a sales calendar built out for ourselves. And so we think that we need to, in order to make money, we need to keep putting out new products and putting out new services, launching new things, when in reality, that's, that's not actually true. And in fact, sometimes putting out more stuff actually detracts from your ability to, to be able to earn capital. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want you to burn out for nothing, that's for sure. And I think that most of us, if you're watching this video, you want to, to sort of separate yourself from the problematic aspects of capitalism, right? And that means that we don't want to perpetuate extractive, degenerative practices in our work. Instead, we want to build uh, regenerative, nourishing practices for us and for our community because that's what's going to make everyone happier, right? And our business so that we can have some longevity because that's really important. And that will make us feel so, so good when we're in the position of knowing exactly what comes next, what we're going to be selling next, what we're going to be launching next. And there's no sense of urgency or scarcity around, oh my God, I just need to put something out because I need some money in my bank account. Nope, we're not doing that. We are not bringing that energy into 2022. Uh, so sales calendar, you say, well, technically, if I have a business, am I not always selling things? Like, isn't that what a business does? And yes, that's true. Um, especially if you have a brick and mortar business, you're probably used to having things on your shelves all the time, right? But because we have internet businesses, we don't need to always have products on our shelves. We can, in fact, close our doors. We can close our sales counters if we want to, if we decide we want, if that feels supportive to us, because we don't need to have uh, empty aisles or empty, I don't know, shelves in a physical space. We can take time off. We can decide not to sell products. We can take, we can sell a product once a month or once a quarter or once a year for a short period of time and have that support us through the entire rest of the year if we really want. And that means that you're not always marketing yourself. You don't always have to show up and be public. You can have a little bit more freedom to have downtime and relax and I guess not always be on the hamster wheel of always creating, always making, always launching, which is I think what bothers so many of us about capitalism is that rest isn't valued. And in a circular sales calendar, actually rest is one of the most important things that you can do. That's why we build it in. And with that, there are four main pillars that you need to know when it comes to thinking about your circular sales calendar and building it out for yourself. So of the four pillars of intuitive business, there's two sort of no-brainer ones. And the first no-brainer pillar is growth. Growth is usually the numbers that we're looking for, right? When we want to grow our email list or our Instagram audience or get more likes on a video view, that's growth. And that's a pretty easy metric for most of us to make goals around and to think about when it comes to our work because it's almost second nature. The next obvious would be revenue. Revenue is how you make your money. So what money is coming into your work, into your business. Again, pretty easy one to remember, easy one to like think about. If you're not making enough money, you put out another product or service that can make you money, right? You got to figure out where your energetic leak is and either plug it or add something new in. But the next two pillars of intuitive business are a little less obvious. Retention just simply means being able to keep your clients 
coming back to you after they've bought from you once. So often we just focus on growth and revenue and we don't think about retention. And that's not great because it's really expensive to acquire new clients or new customers or whomever is shopping with you. And it's much, much more affordable to simply give people an amazing experience who have already worked with you so much so that they want to work with you again and again and again, whether that's as a coach or a teacher or, I don't know, a, a tarot card reader or you own a digital store that sells amazing clothes. You want your customers to come back to you, right? You want them to shop with you again. Retention is also important because it asks us to think about how we can continue to support the people who have supported us. How can we provide value to them in a meaningful way? And then finally, impact is the fourth pillar of intuitive business that we want to think about when it comes to setting goals and also building out our calendar. When we build a calendar conscientious of a sales calendar and that's conscientious of impact and how many people we're able to help and the ripple effect that we're able to have and the really the why behind why we do what we do, that is not only going to bolster our energy and prevent us from burning out, but it will also help us refocus on what matters so that we're not just chasing a revenue number, right, or a salary number, but we're also taking a moment to think about what are like how we're affecting our community, which is really important. And all of those things combined make a circular sales calendar. And a circular sales calendar has a healthy balance between growth, revenue, retention, and impact. When your sales calendar doesn't have a healthy balance of those four pillars, that's when you likely are going to get burnt out or you can say that your business is an, at a place that's imbalanced. So you might burn out, you might notice that your customers or your sales are much lower, um, that you can't hit the goals that you wanna hit, and that generally you're just like straight up not having a good time, you don't feel connected. That's because there's probably an area of the four pillars of intuitive business that you're not thinking about. So with that, so with that let's get into this four pillars of intuitive business notion doc and planning your 2022 promotional sales calendar. So we've got our four pillars. They're great, looking good, feeling fine. And we're gonna wanna start to think about our products, services, and projects. And effectively what we wanna do is put all of those projects, services, and products underneath one of these four pillars. So we're gonna pick the best pillar that would represent the sort of aim of that project, that service, or that product. And it might be, when you first start thinking about this, it might be obvious to you that of course, Every product or service is a revenue driver. Like, duh, of course, they, anything that makes me money is going to go over, under revenue. To which I would say, not so fast, my friend. That is not necessarily true. Let's take an example that I have made for you here inside of this Notion doc. By the way, if you like this doc, um, I'm, there's an even more wonderful, tricked out version of this that is going live to everyone who's in our class on the 29th. Our Future Visioning and Quantum Leaping 2022 Circular Sales Calendar Build. So you'll get a copy of this and we'll build it out together. It'll be really fun. But I've got this really amazing uh, table that has a bunch of different little situations inside of it, a bunch of different properties, right? So I've got the name of my product, service, or project, and then the price per unit, so how much one, one, one little <laughs> unit of that thing costs the revenue that I want to make off of that product, service, or project, the conversion rate, which is simply like how many people actually buy the thing once they see it. So think about your Instagram ads. How many people end up buying those doggy thunder vests after seeing them on their Instagram swipe up, right? So we could see how many people actually went through the process and said yes and checked out, and that would tell us a conversion rate. A conversion rate is typically between 0.5 and like 10%, depending on how big your audience is, how long you've been doing this, all that good stuff. So their numbers vary there. And then you can see that I've got a formula, two formulas that tell us how many leads I'm gonna need to get in front of. So how many people I'm gonna have to market to if I've got this conversion rate, and then how many units I'm going to sell in order to make the revenue I wanna make. So I'm taking into consideration all of these numbers because these numbers basically tell me how much work I'm gonna have to do in order to get to my revenue goal. So for this ebook exam example, we've got it costing a dollar, very, very affordable, and we wanna make five grand off of it. 
And that five grand, if I wanted it to be something that I did for a month, then like in the month of February, I would go over here and I would just select the month of February. But if I want it to be something that I'm selling all the time, meaning that it's always available and it's evergreen, I'm gonna go ahead and click evergreen. So that's gonna tell me when a product is available all the time, year round, I'm always selling it. It's always on the shelf. Okay. So because this is clicked evergreen, this is telling me that I want to make five grand every month off of this ebook. In order to do that at a 2% conversion rate, like what I have here, I'm going to need to get in front of a quarter of a million people, which is a lot of people. And then I'll have to convert about 5,000 of those people in order to make five grand because this is such an affordable product, which is great. And that does make me wonder, well, that's a lot of work to just make five grand. Although five grand is nothing to sneeze at, I could probably you know, spend a, a iota of the time talking to high quality leads for something like coaching, which is a higher ticket item, and probably make that same amount of money. And I'm doing this because I want to be conscientious around the amount of energy I'm exerting and time I'm spending on the different pillars of my business or the levers in my business and seeing which ones get me the most sort of juice for the squeeze. I don't want to burn myself out and put things out in the world just to put them out. I want to be thoughtful about what I do, right? So that I don't burn myself out and I don't burn my audience out. So from there, I'll be able to select, okay, which of the four pillars of intuitive business do I think this falls under? I think that this is going to be an impact. Actually, this is going to fall under impact for me because this product's a dollar. Maybe I'll just make it for free. And it can be an amazing way to grow my audience and also to help people and reach people who maybe want to work with me but don't have the money to. So I can make this free and that's going to have a huge impact on the people that it reaches. From there, once we've kind of like, you know, you've done your first example, you can start to look at all of the products and services that sit in your business and figure out whether they're impact pillar supporters, retention pillar supporters, revenue supporters, or growth supporters. And as you assign those different areas, we're just looking at a different view inside of Notion, you'll be able to see where you have potential gaps in your business. So far, it looks like I don't have a lot to support retention. And so if I'm spending a lot of time getting people in my community and then finally working with them, convincing them or selling them a course and then working with them one-on-one, -on -one, and I've just separated these from evergreen, which are down here, and seasonal offerings. And then I'm going to do all this work to get in front of these people to sell them these things, which is also can be very challenging. And then I'm just going to offer them like this one little element of retention. I don't think so. It looks like I need another project, which is something that's not going to make me money, but directly, or a product or service, which is something that's going to make me money directly. And I need to figure out how I can continue to support my users over a longer period of time. And then of course I've got my impact goals here, so that's looking good. Now, how does this all come together in terms of a calendar? Well, when we looked at your table, we first off have a calendar so we can actually see which months everything is, um, all of these goals are connected under. If we want to, we can totally view it like this. You can see spell kits are active during this time along with one-on-one -on -one sessions. But what I find most helpful is the calendar view and selecting the months that I want this product or service to be live. So this is a connected database or a linked database to something I'm gonna show you in just a second, which are all of my months organized. And when I go in here, I'm gonna just simply, like this is an evergreen product. I'm gonna tag all the months that are available because I know that every month, because this is evergreen, I'm trying to earn $6,000 from one-on-one -on -one sessions. If I didn't want to do one-on-one -on -one sessions every month, because I'm like, oh my God, that's a lot of people I have to talk to because I have to sell 12 units every month. And that means that I'm talking to 120 people or getting in front of 120 people every month. And that's just a lot for me. I would just unclick that evergreen and I would select the months that I want to do this. So right now I'm gonna just say that I wanna do this in September, November, and January. Okay, great. And then if you wanna put the dates that it's live, you can totally do that too, um, especially if you're only launching this for a short period of time. Okay, and remember for projects that don't have a direct transaction connected to them, we don't need to necessarily do this. We can totally add 
product um, projects in here for when we're, we want them to be live, but just as a heads up, you don't need, or when we want them to be evergreen, you don't need to add the input the money here. So let's go down and check out this linked database uh, for monthly financial goals that I've connected to my projects tab. This shows me all of my months. I've only propagated a couple months, and it also shows me which products, services, or projects are active during this time. So the month of January, super busy. I can see the direct connection between how much each of these projects is gonna earn me. If I wanted to, I could even change this and show the actual sum. So I know exactly how much I should be making that month. And then you can see at the bottom here, it adds together all of your revenue, your projected revenue. So you can see about how much you're tracking to make for the entire year. Once I figure this out, I can look from a bird's eye view at each of my months and say, okay, looks like August is super busy, so I'm probably gonna wanna have some downtime in September. And so I'm gonna want to offer a retention product and that looks like one-on-one -on -one sessions. Great, easy. And then maybe that sets me up for the next month and I see, okay, I'm only doing spell kits next month. My revenue is gonna be down. I wanna add something else here. So I'd go ahead and check out my projects and maybe what I wanna add in is um, an affiliate sales option. And that's gonna kick up my revenue to something that might feel a little bit more substantial for me. With these two, going between these two, you know, sort of views, your months that you're active and how much is on your plate every month and your pillars of intuitive business, which we can toggle back to here, you're gonna be able to really quickly figure out the health like of your business. Are you supporting yourself? Do you have enough money? Do you need some downtime? Does it look like you're gonna get burnt out? You can predict all of that before it happens. And that's the beauty of working on your circular sales calendar in the beginning of the year. It can set you up for success and also get you really excited for what's to come instead of like, oh my God, how am I gonna keep doing this? How am I gonna keep making money? How am I gonna keep this thing afloat? You have a general plan. Of course, plans change. I mean, pandemic happened, but you have a general idea of maybe how you wanna spend your time and also what gives you the most bang for your buck when it comes to your energy. And that's it. That's what it looks like to start building out a circular sales calendar for an upcoming year in your intuitive business. There's a lot more to do, but uh, that's the sort of brass tacks. If you liked this and you want to come join us for class next week, I'd be honored to have you. It's called Quantum Leap 2022 Future Visioning and Circular Sales Calendar Building. It's going to be really fun. I can't wait. Ugh, I can't wait to give you the Notion document. Okay, with that, I think that's all I have. I'll put the links below and let me know if you have any questions and I can't wait to hear what your goals are for 2022. In the meantime, I'll see you on the internet.